shoppers are one scroll away from lapsing. They are in this endless aisle of products and brands, and it's hard to help them discover in the way that a store associate would. So a lot of what we do is help brands predict the next great find for each of their shoppers. So they do have that experience of, hey, Beth, the store associate walking into the store, she knows I'm going to love this based on everything I told her I've loved before. And um, in the digital world, you can't always be reliant on what the shopper is going to tell you. Hello and welcome to the D2C Podcast. I'm Eric Dick. Today, we're getting to the core of your customer data with Noble, Director of Loyalty and Retention, Joy Huang, as well as BlueCore VP of Marketing, Sarah Cascone. You can learn more about BlueCore multi-channel personalization at bluecore.com. So in this podcast, you're going to hear how Noble, which is one of my personal favorite D2C brands, uses BlueCore to increase repeat buyers by 46% and expected customer lifetime value by 30%. You'll also hear how Noble maintains complete control and integrity of all stages of their customer journey without using discounts ever, not even on Black Friday, Cyber Monday. I hope you enjoyed this one as much as I did. Now on with the show. Joy, why don't we start with you? Tell us a little bit about the, you know, this is one of those brands that I've, I've seen uh, for years now is one of the, one of the first movers in, in uh, the D to C shoe space and one that I've followed pretty closely. Uh, I, just tell me a little bit about the Noble story to start, would you? Sure. Yeah. So Noble was founded in 2015 um, by our co-founders, um, Marcus Wilson and Michael Schaefer. And to put it simply, our brand is a training brand. We make footwear, apparel and accessories for people who work hard every day with no excuses. And it's, that's as simple as that. So that was the mission for which we founded the company. That was our co-founder's vision. Um, and our brand is truly about creating a really great, simple product that will not enhance your performance, but will be strong enough to keep up with you and the work that you put in. Um, and that's what our community is based on. And what and, that, and cause anything else might be bull. And so yes. with no bull, <laughs> you can keep exactly. it streamlined. Yep. Nice. And then, so your role is at, as the director of loyalty and retention, and you've been at yep. it now for three years. Can you talk a little bit about, uh, about that and how, how, how your sort of role plays within the broader marketing team? Yeah, so what I'm focused on is really engaging with our customers. So once they are introduced to our brand and our community, we want to make sure that they um, are continuing to um, engage with our message, but also that we're following um, and providing them a good shopping experience by giving them personalized um, messaging. Um, So we're trying to make sure that we provide that sort of personal curated experience when we're following um, products they're interested in when they're shopping online and we're able to um, seamlessly connect the dots on all marketing channels um, using that. It seems like, a, you know, I'm sure all brands are thinking about loyalty and retention, but three years ago for a footwear company to be investing in a director of loyalty and retention seems like pretty good foresight. Is, is Am I accurate with that? I, yeah, well, I think it's, it is maybe it's unique to our brand because our brand is, we are thinking of the customer first and our community first, because our, our, our product is really, um, you know, it's made for the, the mission that we stand behind. Um, and it's really important that we are connecting with our customers on that level. So, um, it's, I think it's really just true to who we are. We are not just selling a product, but we are a community of like-minded individuals and that's very much tied to products that we are selling to our customers. And then how does your outward marketing sort of reflect this streamlined focus? Yeah, so I, I'd say, so, you know, when you look at who we are and kind of our our brand identity, we're a very simple brand. Our product looks amazing, and it, but it's very simple and stripped down to basically everything you need and nothing that you don't. It's no frills, no gimmicks. Um, And so when we wanted to make sure that everything we're putting out there reflects that. So if you're coming to our site and you're interested in a particular product or a style, we want to follow through with showing you that we don't want to follow through with a lot of, you know, infinite options or a lot of noise. We wanted that experience to be super custom. And, um, you know, as we scaled and and grew the business, we needed to continue that on on a bigger level. So um, that's kind of the approach that we have with marketing and scaling in general. 
Very cool. So you st- and you basically started, if I recall back, you started with just the one trainer, right? The the simple sort of Matt Gray Noble trainer. Uh, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, well, one of our yeah. So it, in, initially, when we first started, of course, we were a small business, and we had a small product portfolio. We had just a few items, um, but it was truly because our it was bigger than the product. It was about the community and the message. And so as we continue to grow, we now have so many you know different variants of products. We have so many options. And they are tailored to people specifically by the types of training that they're interested in, but also, you know, some materials, colors, you know, personal preference. And there are so many different areas where people can, you know, ex- show their interest. And so you know, having the ability to consolidate all of those and then create the curated experience um, on a large scale is what we're trying to achieve. We're trying to hold on to that as part of our brand. Very cool. Well, let's let's talk a little bit about Bluecore and how uh, how Bluecore comes into this equation. You've got an expanding product catalog. You've got a very clear idea of uh, the kinds of customer experiences you want to maintain and kind of keep consistent. Talk a little bit about discovering Bluecore, implementing it, and and what it's been able to do for you. Sure. Yeah. So I think when we were looking for a solution, we were kind of at the turning point of our business where we were looking to. We had been doing a lot of things manually because we were so careful and adamant on maintaining that very simple um, brand aesthetic and experience. Um, And a lot of tools that we were evaluating had a lot of great capabilities with, you know, pushing things based on how well they're selling or how popular they are, but it wasn't really custom. And so we weren't able to have full control over what that experience was. And we knew that our business was not like everyone else's business. Our customers were not like others and um, our needs were different. So we needed something super flexible. Um, So the thing that we, immediately jumped to with Bluecore was they had the ability, a very robust set of tools to allow us to set our own rules about how and when we show customers something. And it could truly create that one-to-one experience um, based on what they were shopping. Um, and it wasn't based on like a wider set of, you know, popularity or, you know, best-selling items. It was truly tailored to the customer's experience. Um, so we had, we, we have found great success in that, especially with, um, product recommendations, um, the ability to have that be truly tailored to what the customer's interested in, but also, you know, our own needs, for example, like inventory levels, which has been very important for us being able to make sure that the products that are showing up and are being pushed are actually available um, to the customer is, has been huge for us. Very cool. So those are, those are some good examples to make, make things concrete in our listeners mind, but can you give us like a, so say I'm a, a, I'm a user who's coming to your site for the first time. Um, talk, can you t- walk me through a little bit about like the functionality of blue Core in that customer experience kind of, kind of way, obviously, uh, recommendations for people that have made products, but like yeah. walk me through some of the use cases for, for what makes it special. Yes. Okay. So I'll, I'll give um, my favorite example, which is when you come to our site, we have a lot of products and some of them are, you know, they're sold out or they're only available in certain sizes because um, we do have you know, launches where we might have a smaller um, release of items and they might sell out quickly. So when they go to that page, they might love that product, but it's not available. So we have a blue core form that is embedded on the site to collect people's interest if that item is not available. Um, and so that serves two purposes. We can alert them when the item is restocked, but only when the inventory is a level that is actually available to them and capture that moment. Um, and the other thing is we can collect that information and use it to recommend other items that are similar um, in style or color to the customer. So uh, if it's unavailable at the time or not come back for a long time, we can still provide them an item that is curated towards them. Um, so those two things are my favorite examples. Very cool. And then obviously aesthetics are super important with a brand, with, with your brand, uh, any sort of fashion brand, especially. Uh, so how, how are you using blue core to kind of keep the, the brand experience, uh, you know, the same for people? Uh, yeah. So I think that for us, the biggest thing was that we were able to, if someone is interested in a product, we, we want to show them only a few things that are really for them, not a hundred options. So it, it, it's actually really tied to the logic behind it, but the ability to show only maybe four or two items that are very specific to them keeps, it gives us the ability to keep the aesthetic very simple and straightforward because we don't have to say, you know, here's a hundred because we're not able to hone in on what it is that they're interested in. So the ability to do that 
gives us the flexibility to keep our you know aesthetic super bare bones super simple and that's just you know that's that's who we are and that's what our aesthetic is about i i was um I'm wondering too, like, because obviously when, when products are in stock, that's obviously a huge, it's such a, such a waste to bring someone to your website, show them a product that's not in stock. Like I can't think of a bigger, a, a sadder story in e-commerce. Uh, yeah. but I'm, is it also like, is it also help you helping you orient towards per, perhaps higher margin products in some cases? I feel like that's a problem for, for some, uh, advertisers in that they're not, they don't have dialed their margins on like a per product basis in some way. So you'll end up discounting to b bring people in and maybe you don't even end up making if you're discounting, not, not fully properly. And so I'm wondering if in the, in the blue core system, if there's also sort of intelligence that goes into promoting higher margin products, we don't discount anything. Yeah. So, I don't know no, that's, but okay. it, uh, what I will say is that, and, and another example of something we have, uh, we have used with Bluecore is if you have purchased something before, we have the ability to show what you might, what commonly has been purchased as a second follow-up purchase. So if you are a person that comes back repeatedly and you're a loyal customer, we want to show you items that are different than what you have already purchased. And we can use the knowledge of what people are commonly buying as a next purchase or together to suggest something that will, you know, probably something they'll be interested in as a second or a third repeat purchase, which oftentimes could be something that is more than just our core product, our standard trainer, or like, you know, our, you know, our most basic tank. Maybe it, it is a more specific item that is more fit for their type of training. For sure. Um, you mentioned also, I think it was zero party data, right? When you're actually getting people to fill out a small, you know, uh, blue core form that, ex that has them input kind of what they're looking for, uh, give you some information. Is, is that considered zero party data because they're actively being asked a question and giving it, or is that first party data? I mean, we're asking them to let us know if they're interested in that product. So, and, and we're using that information to give them, you know, other options based on that. So I, I would consider that. Yes, they're letting us know that they're actively interested in it. S super valuable data for, for reach out. Are you then reaching out to them via email uh, and SMS or, or one platform over the other? Uh, right, right now we're using it for email, but we're also using that information for um, targeting people via ads. So that we're able to also use that to push into um, Blue Core Advertise, which is really great. Let's talk about that a little bit. It, it, Blue Core Advertise, then, is that something that's constantly sort of feeding um, uh, social media pixels, essentially, with, with data in order to refine specific audiences? So the, well, the way that we're using it right now is we can use the information uh, that we've gathered in Blue Core based on customer behavior or information they've actually pro provided to us to inform uh, what people should be receiving on on. In, in ads. So we can use that information to build lookalike audiences. We can use uh, if they've engaged previously or if they're, if they've purchased previously to have a more specific message so that it's just a more seamless experience across channels. Very cool. Uh, Sarah, welcome. I want to tag you in here to chat a little bit more about Blue Core. Uh, what else would you add about sort of the key value proposition that Blue Core presents to, to, to DC brand owners? Yeah, so I think a lot of what Joy was hitting on around the uniqueness of Noble is something I think every retailer feels. And so much of what makes a retailer or a brand unique lies within their product catalog. And that is really where Blue Core kind of ties together that curation and continuity that Joy is talking about, the experience that Noble wants to create. So by marrying everything you know about the shopper to everything that's happening with your product catalog. So from a price drop, something's going in and out of stock, the style is changing, the color is changing. The, that connection in the data is what allows you to communicate based on preferences per individual. Um, and that is what creates that curation and continuity that every shopper craves and that every brand really wants to deliver, no matter what shape and size from you know, traditional store first brands to a lot of these, um, you know, next to Nikes of the world, as far as I'm concerned, um, when looking at the digital natives like Noble. Very cool. One of the things that we run into all the time on the performance marketing side as a performance marketing agency is our desire to create creative that we can get out quickly and that works because it's a little less polished. 
And I'm in, I'd be interested, Joy, to hear from you how you balance, uh, you know, rapid iteration, which is sort of something that's kind of required on on the creative side, with your very uh, with your brand guidelines, which sound like it's not just you, you don't just have individual brand line get guidelines when it comes to individual images. You also have brand guidelines kind of when it comes to someone's whole customer experience. And I'd be interesting how you balance those things. Yes, um, that is a very good question. So what I once heard our, our co-founder say that the noble mentality means not, you know, looking at the world and doing something because you should or because it's what people are doing, but because it's it's with intention and it's, you know, it means something to you. So for us, that ex extends to our entire brand and everything we do. Um, so, you know, in terms of iterating on, on design or creative, it has to be with intention only if it's because we feel like what we have isn't right or it's not resonating with our community. So we always take it back to who our community is. Why are they part of our brand? What does our brand mean to them? If it doesn't fit that criteria, we won't change it or we won't tweak it because that's just not who we are. Um, so that's, that's how we internally think about it. Cool. Uh, I love Sarah, the idea of of curation and continuity around around what you do, like if you think about uh, you know a, a store that you frequent a lot. My wife frequents a, uh, a, a like a high end secondhand store all the time, and it's like whenever she gets something in that she thinks my wife will like, she's like calling her, texting her, and being like, "Hey, I've got this thing in. I think you'd really like it." And that sort of like uh, curation aspect of that shopping experience has been you know a huge aspect for it. And, and when and when you think about D to C, you you want to own these. Uh, these channels uh, and you want to be able to have, you know, to reach customers where they're at in a dynamic fashion without a one size fits all fabric. So uh, or solution, sorry. So it, it really seems like blue core kind of solves that, that feeling where you want, you, you want to give people that like one-to-one -one connection that really makes sense uh, every time they come to the store. Yeah, that's exactly right. And if you think about the digital environment, especially shoppers are one scroll away from lapsing. They are in this endless aisle of products and brands, and it's hard to help them discover in the way that a store associate would. So a lot of what we do is help brands predict the next great find for each of their shoppers. So they do have that experience of hey, Beth, the store associate walking into the store, she knows I'm gonna love this based on everything I told her I've loved before. And um, in the digital world, you can't always be reliant on what the shopper is going to tell you. So it's up to the brand to kind of take all of those digital signals, make sense of them in a way to say, hey, this type of product recommendation makes sense for Joy, or this level of offer makes sense for Eric. And uh, Joy is most likely to buy on the email channel. So all of these things kind of fit into the level of curation and continuity that's necessary for the loyalty that brands like loyalty are striving for. And I, it, this all sounds like it happens pretty much real time, uh, you know, as people are, are experiencing, you know, the, the product, the store, the customer experience. But at the same time, there's probably also just a wealth of data that exists in the platform that, that you could look at kind of like on a monthly or, or even yearly basis in order to inform bundling decisions, product development decisions. Is, is that a, a part of the process as well, where you're kind of looking at your data in aggregate and actually making decisions about how to grow your business more in the future? Yes. So that's definitely a lot of what the Blue Core platform has potential to do. So all of the data is collected and analyzed and acted on in real time so that you're never missing out on the opportunity to communicate with a shopper. And what I what you're hitting on, I think, is really important. The speed and agility that that affords is not just from a communications perspective with the shopper, but hey, talk about inventory and supply chain issues right now. If I understand and I can predict that this many shoppers are going to want to buy this product, I can then make sure I'm buying the right amount of product and stocking my warehouse in a certain way that affords a certain level of efficiency for a business that we haven't seen before. And we do see some of our customers even using that level of intelligence within Blue Core. Uh, just, you know, we just passed Black Friday, Cyber Monday. 
And I was wondering, uh, Sarah, maybe start with you, just from your view across a number of brands. Were there any kind of metrics that, that stood out from, from what happened this year, Black Friday, Cyber Monday? Oh, absolutely. So, I mean, one of the first ones that came to mind is the fact that 69% of shoppers actually abandon sites due to out-of-stock items. So for me, this represents an enormous opportunity to have that level of curation and help shoppers discover products that they're interested in that are in stock. And that requires a certain level of that real-time product context that Joy even talked about regarding um, those notifications and pop-ups on her site. Um, one more I'd love to throw out there is the fact that 52% of all shoppers were first-time buyers. So this now is the opportunity to, how do I get these folks back to buy again? Um, we know that within 100 days after the first purchase is when someone is most likely to buy again. And those second time buyers are almost doubly as valuable as those first time buyers. So it's really important now to, okay, what do I understand about that person that bought from me once? How do I predict that next great find? So they can become part of the noble community, for example, and be a loyal shopper. I love that. And that, and that I hear this time and time again. It's like people are talking about, oh, we, you know, we have retention problems or we, we want to, you know, uh, have a really long lifetime value. But when you really zoom in on it, it's just getting them to make that second purchase, which is often like the difference between, you know, a person who makes one purchase and a person that makes two is probably a bigger difference than a person that makes two and three and four. It's, it's getting over that, that, and that, that kind of comeback, uh, purchase. So Joy, I wanted to ask you on your side, like what have been some of the key things that you've implemented on the noble side to move people from uh, their first purchase into into a second or third? Yeah. So one of the big things is we have, of course, as many other brands, a lot of new customers coming in on um, over the holidays, over Black Friday. And uh, what we have to do immediately following that is, you know, to start nurturing them to become part of our community and then towards that second repeat purchase. And um, we have used Bucor for sure to create a journey for them that shows, you know, following what they bought, what could they be interested in, what's re related to the item that they bought, and what is something complementary to that item um, that makes sense for the type of training that they do or the item that they were interested in. So that is folded into our kind of nurture series for um, customers who have made that first purchase. Um, so we're right now, you know, we're in the weeks coming, we're, we're continuing that. We're, we have a lot of messaging to those customers to nurture them into a loyal customer following that first purchase on Black Friday. That's amazing. And you mentioned that you don't discount often or at all. I was wondering, did you discount over Black Friday, Cyber Monday? Was there was there a good sale for that? And how'd it go? We, we, do, we, we never do that. We never, ever <laughs> provide discounts. Um, Got it. So, but we do have annually, we release a brand new um, collection uh, during the holidays and it's always special and unique. Um, and so I think for us, it's really once a customer is made aware of us, we want to show them our products, but we also want to introduce who we are in our community um, and welcome them into that, uh, you know, who we are and then continue to nurture them on the product side. Well, this is, it's a really interesting case study. How, like, you know, just because you're the first brand I've talked to, I think that didn't do a Black Friday, Cyber Monday sale. Um, by launching products at this time, did you sort of repeat, did you, were you able to capture a lot of that fever and, and have like a big increase in sales or is it just sort of a regular time of year for you guys? Um, so we released our, uh, you know, it, it has been some kind of a tradition year over year. We always have a collection that launches at midnight on Black Friday. Um, and I think it is, you know, we, we've never discounted before, but we're, we are creating uh, collections that are completely unique around this season um, and people very much look forward to it. We look forward to it and it's completely new styles and designs that um, are exciting for our community. It's such a smart play too, because and I, I, was, I, think I was just having a conversation about this is like when you discount, you don't know how many of those people were just going to come back anyway. And, and you've created another mechanism for people to want to check in with you around this time. Um, and the fact that you probably have stuff in stock, we were even saying that, you know, this Black Friday Cyber Monday with all the supply chain issues that people had, even having products in stock reliably is sort of almost fills the need to give a discount in some ways. Um, so it's pretty impressive to to not be giving discounts at all and still smashing Black Friday Cyber Monday. Well, yes. way to go. 
Well, and, and also actually in the in the weeks following, we have started to a, a few of the items that were very popular have started to sell out. So even more so, we're using the information we have to show other items that are similar or that customers might be interested in to continue that um, because we, we are starting to sell out of some of the items already. So very cool. How what are your goals with Noble? Like how how big I'm always interested when I talk to D2C, you know, I've been a, a longtime shoe fan. I love I love Vessies, I love I love Noble, but I also love the you know the incumbents, the Nikes, the Under Armors, these huge mega corps. I'm just always interested I always interested in hearing sort of like the the high level the Noble's goals in in this space. Yeah, so I think that our goal for 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 sure for, for next year is to continue to expand and grow um, our customer base because there are a lot of people out there who do a lot of different types of training and work hard every day and have the noble mentality but they just haven't discovered our brand yet um so our brand is for people who train hard and that has we have barely tapped the surface of of that audience there are so many other people out there who can resonate with our message um so our goals are we will continue to we will be growing our product portfolio we're uh, expanding into more you know types of training different sports and there'll be more of that coming in the next year that are that will be exciting news for everyone. Um, but that's where we'll be focusing on uh, in the coming year. Very cool. And you've got uh, your content around products and the different angles of the products. I'm curious how how you think about content marketing aside from offers, because you have such an interesting space. This this training hard space uh, is something that people are so passionate about. There's, it's a big part of their lives. And so there's a ton of opportunity for content around this. How do you guys think about content in your, for instance, in your nurturing floor? Do you, do you focus mainly on making well-timed and targeted offers or are you sort of storytelling and, you know, tackling the, the space in a, in a broader content way? Yeah, well, so actually, we, because, you know, the, the purpose of our, our products or our message is that the, the products won't make you any stronger or make your performance any better. It's really the work that you put in. So the content that we have when we're nurturing people and, and bringing them into our community is really is not focused on, you know, our products focused on who the customer is and finding that, you know, connecting their, their, the way their mentality or the way that they approach working hard with who we are. So um, the focus on to often of our content is not about, of course, it's a product that looks amazing, but it's about the person and the individual um, and the work that they're putting in. And um, our, our products are there to support that mentality and that training. Um, so there's a good balance for sure of showing our community and our who we are, but then also showcasing our product that looks great and is amazing. Very cool. And then on the blue blue core side, there, Sarah, what what are what are your goals with uh, with blue core in twenty twenty two and beyond? So our goals for blue core are really to empower retail customers to discover their best customers and and keep them for life. Um, so how do we help businesses drive sustained profitability and growth? and move away from things like discounts, for example, where you're actually eroding margins for the business. And you know the strategy that Joy and the team are employing there is super smart because at the end of the day, discounts are not value for everyone. And value is completely different based on whatever shopper you're speaking to. So being able to speak to that value and preferences on a one-to-one level and get them to their next great find so that Shoppers have an amazing experience that keeps them coming back for more, and brands are able to continue to drive dollars to their bottom line is the is the ultimate goal for us. Love to hear it. Um, anything else that we want to chat about on this uh, on this podcast? I think I think we've covered it really well. Like I'm always just interested in, in the tactical ways that people that that Bluecore allows you to sort of engage your audience. So you've got you've got the product recommendations. You've got uh, well-timed emails based on user behavior. What else, what other are other ways that are, that blue core is actually, um, engaging customers? Yeah, I think at the end of the day, it's, it's really personalization in every aspect that a shopper is going to engage with a brand. So making sure their the product recommendation is unique to you, Eric, the offer is unique to you. The content is unique to you. The channel in which we're communicating to you is unique to you. Um, and so that's the in intelligence and personalization that we're scaling across the different channels, whether it's email, onsite, paid media, or SMS, because 
at the end of the day, it, it's not the channel that matters. Going back to what Joy was talking about, it's the shopper and it's the customer that matters. So you need to start with that personalization and that curation at a one-to-one -one level and then branch it outwards to get to that ultimate customer experience and really make your business thrive. Very awesome. So if you want to know more about BlueCore and what it can do for you, please go to bluecore.com uh, and check it out. Obviously, if you want to uh, have less bull in your life, uh, <laughs> then go to nobull.com and grab a pair of, of these sweet trinkets. Our, our, our URL is actually not nobull.com. It's nobleproject.com. Um, no, noble.com is a, like a, like a, like, I think it's like cow something. It's, it's nothing to do with us. <laughs> I just don't want people to go. There. <laughs> That's a great shout. I'm glad I just did not give a free plug to, to a, a, a livestock operation. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's a livestock, something like that. So like, oh, it's auto, never mind. It's auto centers. It's a used car. We are working on that. <laughs> it's Noble. Yeah, <laughs> you gotta lock that one down. Nobleproject.com. Go there now. Check out the new arrivals. Thank you for sharing your strategies today. This has been great. Thanks so much for listening to today's episode. If you're not a subscriber to our newsletter, you can do that right now at directtoconsumer, all one word, dot co. I'm Eric Dick, and this has been the D2C Podcast. We'll see you next time.